The Money Fight is coming up. That's right. This is Ben Greenfield. There's this thing called the Money Fight. It's going to be the biggest fight, I think, of the freaking century. It's at T-Mobile Arena in Nevada, and it is a professional boxing match between undefeated 11-time five-division professional boxing world champion Floyd Mayweather Jr. and the current UFC lightweight champion Conor McGregor. It's going to rock. If you're a boxing fan, heck, even if you're not a boxing fan, if you're just like, I don't know, a history fan, you just like to watch cool stuff, you can't miss this. Uh, this podcast episode might get you kind of pumped up for it, though, because it's all about how to use boxing and sparring and fighting to turn your body into the ultimate fitness weapon. You're going to enjoy this show. Uh, and this show is brought to you by foursigmatic.com slash Greenfield. foursigmatic.com slash Greenfield. If you visit there, you will be pleasantly surprised because I have laboriously listed every one of my favorite mushroom extracts that I personally drink. We're talking mushrooms like mushroom coffee with cordyceps and chaga for morning performance, a mushroom hot cacao mix with cordyceps for energy, a mushroom coffee with lion's mane and chaga for a little bit of a nootropic effect. Uh, they've even got reishi mushroom, which you may not have known this, decreases sleep latency and improves naps significantly. So you can try any of their mushrooms. They're my favorite mushrooms. You go to foursigmatic.com slash greenfield and use coupon code Ben Greenfield. That's foursigmatic.com slash greenfield and use code Ben Greenfield. When you go to that URL, uh, you'll be able to see all my favorite mushrooms and that code Ben Greenfield gets you 15% off. How nifty is that? I also want to tell you about health gains. Health gains. And I'm going down there to Hollywood, Florida. Next week, actually, I'm doing stem cell therapy in Hollywood, Florida. And then I'm jetting over to this health gains place to do some of their innovative concierge age management integrative wellness treatments because my goal by the time i'm 40 is i want to have a biological age of 25 just cuz uh and dr Gaines, who runs that clinic he is one of the nations probably one of the world's leading experts in hormone replacement therapy testosterone therapy growth hormone therapy and pretty much any type of therapy that assess you with sexual wellness uh, your your uh, uh, sexual performance, your libido, uh, your anti aging, but it's all drug free. It's all surgery free, and uh, they've got these uh, things called P shots and O shots, and their gains wave treatment, which is acoustic sound wave therapy for your crotch. Uh, this is one of the coolest clinics on the face of the planet, in my opinion. It's like a candy store for all things male and female sexual performance and anti aging. Uh, you can go to any of their clinics around the nation, uh, but if you want to go to the one in Aventura, Florida, which is where I'm going, pretty simple. Uh, you text the word GAIN to 313131. Automatically, just walk in the front door, they give you 250 bucks off of any of their treatments. So you text the word GAIN to 313131. I take zero responsibility for the fireworks that may ensue in your crotch, uh, but enjoy. In this episode of the Ben Group from Fitness Show... I remember when I was 15, 16 years old, this, this will blow your mind, and I'm, and I'm fighting in the national championship final, or, or even in the tournament. After my win, the day of a fight, the trainers would say, well, you can eat anywhere you want, so let's go to McDonald's. We'd be at McDonald's the day of a fight. So now you're seeing fighters, young boys getting cut in the eyes and the face. You're not going to put your son into a sport like that. But with head guards on, you might. So I think long term, taking the head guards out of boxing is going to damage the sport. He's an expert in human performance and nutrition. Voted America's top personal trainer and one of the globe's most influential people in health and fitness. His show provides you with everything you need to optimize physical and mental performance. He is Ben Greenfield. Power, speed, mobility, balance. Whatever it is for you that's the natural movement, get out there. When you look at all the studies done, studies that have shown the greatest efficacy. All the information you need in one place, right here, right now on the Ben Greenfield Fitness Podcast. So, Tony, what do you think about the workout, man? 
I loved it. It was something completely different to what I think I've done before. And to to clarify, running around the trees like little boys. Yeah, but it makes it fun. It t- you know, it takes the the chore out of working out. And uh, yeah, it was it was good. Yeah, I mean, it's a lot different than when I come down and visit you, and we're inside the the gym there in in uh, in Santa Monica. Bouncing around in your in your uh, what do you call them? The, what, what do you call the the facilities? Is it basically just like the ring? Is that what you call it when you're in the in the gym in the boxing ring? Yeah, in the boxing gym in Box and Burn, we got two boxing facilities. Box and Burn, Box and Burn in Santa Monica and one in Brentwood. And it does Angeles. burn. I mean, I don't know if anybody listening has boxed before, <laughs> but like, I'm I'm in good shape. You know, we just run we ran around the obstacle course just now, right? And I run around on this thing like once a week. I go hit it for sixty to ninety minutes doing the rope climbs right. and the the log weave and the wall and everything so I have a gas tank but dude boxing is a whole different ball game physiologically yeah. well as well like I can do boxing all day long but I do a couple of laps here and your, and your young boys are beating me around here you know yeah uh, it's, it's kind of what you get used to but yeah boxing is a great workout it's a full body workout you know well part of it I, th- I think too is when you're boxing and this is what I feel. My hands are up. I feel like my diaphragm is contracted. Some of my inspiratory and expiratory muscles are maybe a little bit more restricted. It's it's almost like if you were if you were going out for a run, but you had like your shoulders elevated and your hands up the whole time. It's it's a little bit different cardio when you when you have your hands up versus your hands down. It sounds it, stupid, but yeah, I mean it does, and it, it's great for endurance in your shoulders because like you see you've got your hands up, and when you're throwing the punches as well. Yeah, uh, your arms are getting exhausted, but you've got to keep your hands up because you know what happens if you drop your hands. Yeah, you get a clip around the you ear. Get hit in the face. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you get hit in the face. So yeah, I mean, it's a, it's a great workout, and as well, what a lot of people don't realize is how much it works out your brain. You your think, brain. Your brain. It works out your. It's brain. like mental chess. It is. It is, and uh, and you're thinking all the time. Like I said, if you drop your hands, you're going to get hit. You've got to think about the the numbers that I'm calling out. The one two, one two hook, one two rule. You got to roll. You got to bend your legs. You got to move your feet. It's yeah. essentially like more or less for for a beginner six different hits that you were six di- six different punches, right? One, two, three, four, five, six. Well, it's one, two, hook, two, uppercut. Uh, mm-hmm. Yeah, so it's, it's probably the, the five punches, but and then you've got your your footwork as well, and then your hands up when you're thinking about your defense. You think that's about- what I like about it is it, because I come from a background of tennis, which is kind of like you might think this is silly, but it's almost like boxing across the net, right? Because right. you're anticipating the opponent's move. You're responding to it. You're watching them, and then you're responding with either defense or offense. Right. Granted, you're not getting hit in the face. Yeah. There's a little bit more, less pressure. Well, it is. It's like that hand and eye coordination with your foot coordination as well. You've got to be fast on your feet with tennis. And we've trained quite a few tennis players who says boxing really improves the, the tennis when they're doing that. Same, oh, yeah. Same with football. Same with most sports. I think boxing kind of, if you do boxing training for fitness and you're not getting punched in the head, I think uh, that really can help improve whatever sport you're doing. I have a ton of questions for you about how you structure the workouts and a little bit more about the the physiological and mental requirements of boxing. Um, But the first thing, million dollar question, uh, Conor McGregor's trained down at your place, right? Yeah. Down in Santa Monica? Yeah. All right, so fill me in, dude, because this podcast is, is going to come out, I think, before he fights Floyd, Floyd, uh, Floyd Mayweather. Right. What are your thoughts on that fight? Is he going to get his butt kicked like everybody's saying? <laughs> yeah, he's going to get his butt are you kicked. Allowed, are, are you allowed to, to delve into this? No, it's too I am. I am. Uh, yeah, he's going to get his butt kicked, but it's. I think it's fantastic. It's a great fight. It's very exciting. You know, and like you said, he, he's comes, he comes to the gym every time he comes to train in Los Angeles he comes and trains our box and burn in, in either location we've got a, a great repu- uh, a great so you got one in Santa Monica and yeah. the other, where's the other one Brentwood in Brentwood yeah okay. in Brentwood and he comes to either gym and uh, you know he's a great fella and I really hope that he, he does well but I just can't see it you know he's fighting the, the be- one of the best of all time in boxing he's never had any boxing fights so he's got his work cut out but it's a, it's exciting but times. he's got such fast hands I mean yeah, so was Floyd Mayweather. That, that's really? the thing. Yeah, I mean, like, it's uh, it's going to be exciting because he's got fast hands and he can punch really hard as well. Yeah. But, like, Floyd Mayweather, he's so smart. His defense is, is amazing. Are you a big boxing fan or MMA fan? I like watching? to watch it, but I mean, I'm I'm not I'm not a I'm not a fan enough to be putting any money on the line. Let's put it that way. All right? Yeah, I've put quite a bit of money on the line on on Mayweather to stop McGregor, even though, like I say, I hope McGregor can win, but I just don't see he's got a chance. He's going to get knocked out like a first round, or not the first round. I think it's going to go a few rounds and then it's going to get stopped. Uh, I think he'll get stopped. I think he'll, Mayweather will hit him with body shots because in MMA, there's not very many body shots get thrown, but in boxing, it's all the time. So I think Mayweather's going to hit him with some body shots and, and 
You think matters that Mayweather's old and retired? I mean, uh, uh, does, I mean, he's forty, but he's, he's forty. But then you, look at, then you look at then you look at the guys like Bernard Hopkins, who was a world champion when he was forty-eight, and you know, and, and maybe he's always in shape. So I think uh, I, th- I think he's he's got to beat uh, he's got to beat Conor McGregor. How old are you? How old do you think? I'm gonna say uh, remember, with, with remember, this faster move out there on the obstacle course, man. I don't know. I, I don't know. It's, <laughs> it's tough for me for you to say that because I know you can kick my ass. Yeah. Um, I think we're gonna spar tomorrow morning too, by the way. So you, you'll have your opportunity. Um, I would say uh, I don't know where are you, man. Like forty ish. <laughs> forty. And not you being kind. Forty one, forty two. Mm-hmm. I don't know. Cheeky, you swear on this podcast. Yeah, you can swear. Cheeky we'll, bastard. We'll, we'll bird song it out. I was born in 1985. You were born in 1985? Yeah. Wow, dude, you look so you like were, one, you, you one were, tough son of a you bitch. You're 10 years off. I'm 32. You're 32? 32, Seriously? Yeah. You've done a lot for being 32 years old. I had 106 fights in my career, and I worked it out. For each one of them fights, if I got punched in the face seven times, and for each one of them fights, I sparred uh, 10 times, right. six rounds, and each one of them rounds of sparring, I got hit in the face seven times. Anyway, I've done the maths, and I've been punched in the head over 50,000 times. Holy cow. How about that? So no wonder I look 42 when I'm 32. Well, I mean, you're, you're kind of like thick and tough looking too. I mean, you have like that kind of like weathered, beat up kind of look. Yeah. I, mean, like, I, I, think, I guess that's yeah. the way a boxer looks. Huh? And then as well, with the, with the workout, I've not, I've, that's the first workout I've done this year. I haven't exercised this year. Believe you mean that obstacle course workout yeah. we just did? Yeah. yeah. So that kicked me off. So that's why I was like a 42. Well, you get a little bit of a workout like there. sparring with people at Box and Burn. But like I said, that's easy well, for that's me. That's easy for I you. Yeah, I've, I've noticed that too, dude. When we, with the past couple of times I've been down there in LA and we've sparred. Like I feel totally gassed. You're just standing there with a smile on your face as I'm chasing you around you? the worrying. You got to guess on that too. Thirty six. Thirty six. Yeah, I'm thirty six. You are. Yeah, yeah. On the money. Oh, man. look at that. On look the that. money. Yeah. Actually, you know, I take that back. I'm thirty five. The reason I, I agreed with you that I was 36 was I recently got I got this test done. It's a blood test, right. and they measure the length of your telomeres to figure out what your biological age is. Not your chronological age, but your biological age. And my biological age is actually a year older than 35. So according to my cells, I'm 36. And I talk with the cat who I interviewed, and, and uh, I can put a link to this in the show notes to so that interview. If you guys want to listen to it, it's at um, the show notes for this show. You can get at bengreenfieldfitness.com slash boxing. That's bengreenfieldfitness.com slash boxing. But uh, they, they test the telomeres on your white blood cells. And a whole bunch of things can influence it, right? Like your diet, how hard you exercise, how easy you exercise, how much you exercise, air, light, water, electricity. And I think because I spent like 10 years racing Ironman triathlon, you know, kind of like you, kind of getting right, hit yeah. in the face, except I, I was inflaming my body. Um, I'm actually older, right? Like I put more years on my body than it should have put yeah, on I'm it. I'm surprised with that with you because you do all of this bio well, Yeah, that, you know? I mean, just, just imagine. I, I mean, I know I have a lot of friends who are just like completely hormonally depleted and they feel like crap and they're getting joints replaced and you know that they're, they're completely screwed their bodies so i'm in i'm in okay territory but my goal now and i've got a bunch of stuff i'm doing behind the scenes to help out like i'm i'm doing stem cells now and i'm i'm uh researching all these different kinds of you know capsules and nicotinamide adenine dinucleotide injections all these things you can do to reverse aging my goal now is by the time i'm 40 i want to be 25 that's, that's what I'm shooting for. That's a big jump. So, yeah, no, well, biologically 25. Right. So I want to do the Benjamin Button thing. But for you, <laughs> yeah, getting getting hit that many times, dude. Have you ever been you've been knocked out like TBIs, concussions? I've had concussions. I've had about five concussions, and yeah. it's not it's not nice. I had my first concussion as a 16 year old by getting punched in the head. It was a European final. I actually won the fight against the guy who knocked everyone out, and he hit me in the second round, and my legs went like jelly and my my brain got rattled around my head and I stopped the guy in the third round and I didn't realise when I got out the ring that I was a European champion and I went back to my teammates and I said what happened in the fight and they were all making fun of me oh you got beat you got beat I said honestly I couldn't remember a thing after the fight I got on the podium like I said the European champion on the gold, the gold medal getting the gold medal on the top of the podium with the national anthem after that fight I can't remember a thing and that was the first time we were concussed. And it's a scary feeling. And then again, when I was 18 fighting, I was fighting the Swedish champion. Punched him, you know, got caught with a good punch and legs like jelly. I never, I stopped on my feet. But 
you know, that, that concussion. It's a, it's a very You ever see footage thing. and see if you keep fighting after you get concussed? Because that's what a lot of guys say is they'll, they'll like be yeah. fighting and they don't even know they're fighting. Well, that comes down to the, the conditioning that you're mm-hmm. in. You've been con- great conditioned and, uh, and you, you're fighting on pure inst- instinct, you know, and I've won, I've won the fight twice when I've been concussed in the fight, you know, because I've went through and I can't remember a thing after. I, I looked on my phone and realized that oh, I've got a wife. I couldn't even remember my wife's name. I've got, it's that bad. No, yeah, it's it's scary, and then you have to fight the next day as well. You know, in in these tournaments when you're fighting for your country, you're fighting for a four for me. Well, that, that's so bad for you because one of the top recommendations that they give to you when you've had a TBI is to avoid getting hit again or getting right. your head jarred for weeks or months after. Yeah, yeah I mean, you know, it's common sense, really. Yeah, but, you know, I, I fight the next day, and I, I mean, I, I won the, won again the next day, but you just know it's it's not good for you, and it's really scary because I mean. This is something that I wanted to talk to you about a little bit because I've been I've been worried about my my brain health about uh, deterioration in my brain and my memory losing focus and even even with speech I might sound all right now or I might sound a bit funny now because of the accent but there's a little bit of stuttering here here and there and maybe that's through the the concussions or, or through yeah the, the punch, punch I, the I have a book you need to read I'll, I'll give it to you, you take it home um it's it's a brand new book it's by this super smart guy now i met him he's actually i, I met him in the world of psychedelics right he's he's big into like microdosing lsd and mushrooms and wow. my brother and i are flying down to costa rica at the end of this year to do iboga which is plant-based medicine it's like ayahuasca on steroids right. in terms wow. of just reinventing your entire outlook on life incredibly uncomfortable medicine you know in terms of just like taking it into the deep end of you know hallucinating and vomiting and all, all sorts of nasty stuff but what this guy specializes in is not really psychedelics it's neurology he's a physician who specializes in neurology and he just wrote this book that's the most comprehensive book on traumatic brain injuries and concussions i've ever read in my life like i mentioned What's it's called, it called the concussion repair manual you can't get it yet because it didn't come out but i have got it in my office right. remind me after we record I'll, I'll give it to you because what he goes into is everything from hyperbaric oxygen therapy right. to float tanks to the correct diet and the correct dietary supplements, things like intranasal glutathione, right? Because normal glutathione, which is a really good anti-inflammatory, doesn't make it into neural tissue. You have to to inhale it through your nose. But is that is um, it not too late for that now? Is that not to mean you have no a lot, a lot of this stuff because it's kind of like Alzheimer's or dementia, right? right? You get neurofibrillary yeah. tangles, you get inflammation. You get degradation of the mitochondria in neural cells, but you can rebuild a lot of that. And so th- this is oh, what his can? book delves into. Yeah, you should give it a read. I'll, I'll give I it will. to you. And and for those of you listening in, if you want to get this, uh, go, go to bengreenfieldfitness.com slash boxing, and I'll put it in there. But that's probably the most complete manual I've ever read on how to heal concussions and TBIs. And he also goes into, you know, for example, neurofeedback and, you know, some of these cheap apps you can put in your iPhone, but yeah. also clinics that you can go to, you know, down by you in LA, there is, for example, this guy who does a really good job at rewiring your brain. That's Dr. Um, Hill. That's Dr. Andrew Hill. Yeah, I went there. Yeah. I went there last week, actually. You know, the Peak Brain Institute. Yeah. 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 Yeah, so the Peak Brain Institute, I even took my kids there uh, last week, and he asked me, so I have this son who's super creative, Taryn, but he's also like me when I was growing up. He's a space cadet, right? Like right. I, I was I was uh, filming him as he was walking through Boise with us last weekend. We took the whole family down to Boise to do the Spartan race down there, and he's just like me. He's walking along the street with a book in his hand, his nose buried in a book, and you can talk to him, and he just looks up, and after about five minutes, say, what? What were you talking to me? He, <laughs> he doesn't know what's going on half the time because he's he's just like all over the place, right. right? Creatively, and Dr. Hill scanned his brain. He scanned his brother's brain. They're identical twins, and he says about Taryn, you know, the, the twin yeah. who's like the more creative twin. He says so. So he has a history of of concussions or TBIs wow. or what's going on with him. And I said, no, never. He's just like that creative that his brain waves are so far off into the realm of creativity that it looks like he's had a concussion. So wow. there, there are other things that, that can that can cause the same symptoms of concussion. But yeah, that Peak Brain Institute, uh, for those of you listening in, again, like really cool place to go. I don't yeah. know if you thought about it, Tony. Yeah, no, it was great. And Did I you fly the spaceship with your mind? I, I drove the car and knocked zombies over nice. with my Nice, that's with a my fun brain. one, yeah. Yeah, that was good. Yeah, you fly, you, you drive, you can drive like a Hummer and run into zombies. <laughs> yeah. 
change right. your, your beta brain waves. So I went, to, I went to a place called the Cleveland Clinic in Vegas. Have you heard mm-hmm. of that place? Yep. It's a yeah. tests on, on fighters, former fighters for their brain. And we did all sorts of tests like balance tests, speech tests and memory tests. And, uh, and for, a, I was 31 at the time and for a 31 year old, my results came back normal, which I was very happy with. And, but he said that I've got a split in my membrane, the what attaches your brain to your skull, mm-hmm. to the membrane. Mm-hmm. And he said, I've got a, a very large split in the membrane. And he said, like 50% of boxers have this split in their membrane of when your brain gets rattled that hard yeah. in, in, around your uh, skull that uh, it, it splits. So but he said, there's no evidence that that can affect you in life. I don't know if you know anything about that. Interesting. No, I don't know about the split. Like, like that's more of like an anatomical issue. Right. Yeah, I don't know about that. You know, that's not something I, not something I personally run into. We should, uh, we should connect you though with this, with this guy, Doctor Dan Engel, who wrote that concussion repair yeah, manual I was talking great. about. He, he would know a lot about it. Now, I, I wanted to yeah. also ask you. you know, there's, there's so many questions after me having experienced like the burn at Box and Burn. Right. Um. The training requirements for boxing, like, like what is a what is a typical kind of like training day look like when you're training for boxing? Is it is it a mix of road work and high intensity interval training? Is it a lot of weight training? Yeah. Like, like, and and I'm especially talking about, you know, obviously there's like the old school Rocky movies where he's you know just like pumping iron and yeah. and running in his hoodie through up the stairs in Chicago. But what's kind of like new school boxing training look like? Right. Well, when I was training for the Olympics in, in 2007, 2008, we, we trained four times a day for four days a week. And we did, because in, in the Olympics, we were doing four rounds of two minutes. That's all mm-hmm. it was. So we were training like short, uh, sharp. Four times a day? Yeah, four wow. times a day. We'd do, do like interval running on a the morning. There might be a, a four, uh, a four two-minute sustained run on a running track, with obviously with a warm-up, warm up, cool down. Then we'd do a small strength session at 10 o'clock. And then 11.30, we'd do a sparring session, a boxing session, um, a pad session, kind of like what we do in boxing right. burn. And then, because uh, boxing's a lot of, uh, you've got to control your weight, we do a, a long sustained run at like 6, 7 o'clock. And then with diet in between. So, like, I think, then this was back in 2007. I know, like, times have changed now with fitness and how to lose weight, but we used to do the long, steady runs for, for weight loss. And that was a, a typical a typical day for us when we trained for the Olympics. Then fast forward to 2009 when I turned professional, I went down to two sessions a day uh, for five days a week. And then- one. You had fewer sessions when you turned pro? Yeah, but the sessions were longer because as a pro I was doing, I got up to, my last fight was eight three minute rounds. So the sessions went on a bit longer. Eight three minute rounds. Yeah. How long are you recovering between eight three minute rounds? One minute. Well, it's, it's more so like it's 50, three, three minutes on, one minute off. It's, yeah, it's more like 50 seconds by the time you get to your corner. And that three minutes is hard. I mean, again, for anybody listening in who's who sparred or boxed, I'm gassed. Yeah. You know, after about two minutes, and that last minute, you feel like you're fighting for your life. Right. Then you get barely any recovery and you just jump into <laughs> it again. Yeah. Well, that, that when, you sit, again again. when you're sitting down in the corner, that's like the, the fastest 50 seconds of your life. Oh, it's yeah. Like, whoosh, yeah. In and out. Uh, so w- when I was training for a pro, uh, it would be two sessions a day. It would be running and boxing. Basically, mm-hmm. we'd run every day. Uh, we'd, uh, that, that like would, steady state run or you do track intervals? That, that, it, would, it would vary between the steady state run and, and the track intervals. Uh, and then the, with the stairs and, and hill sprints and... Uh, short sprints and the closer the fight uh, we got like like a week out for the fight you'd start doing short sprints you know like keep you sharp and short rounds like one minute rounds just feeling good you know because the see in the week of the fight you're not going to get any fitter you know so you just want to get sharp and, and feel good and ready for the fight so yeah I mean it was very intense it, it was very intense a lot on the body and then I mean one of the biggest things was recovery rest and recovery because you need to be hundred percent, or, or as or as close to hundred percent you can be for for your next session, because you want to get the most out of your session. Right. You mean like the session later on in the day? Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. So yeah. I, I would a lot of boxers run early in the morning, like the Rocky style. I didn't like to do that. I like to I like to do me boxing in the morning and get the best out of me boxing session, and then do the run in the afternoon. You know. So I I would be doing me boxing session at like ten in the morning, and then do me run at three in three in the afternoon. Uh, yeah. 
Yeah. And that's that's where nutrition becomes important. A lot of people ask me about this. You know, I, I think that pre-workout and post-workout nutrition is overrated. Meaning that when you see somebody like waltzing out of the health club with a freaking like 24 ounce Jamba juice in their hands, right, yeah. they don't need that, right? Or when you see somebody like dropping the bar and just boogieing straight to the locker room to suck down their maltodextrin and whey protein shake. Yeah. You don't need that because your body, when you're eating ad libitum, just like according to appetite within about eight hours you naturally replenish all your glycogen stores and you're good to go for the next day but if you're in a situation where you're a two-day athlete and you're going to be exercising again in less than eight hours after yeah. you've already worked out that's where post-workout nutrition comes in key where you actually want you know it doesn't have to be like a like a carb fest so, you know it can be your your body can actually restore glycogen levels or glucose from things like you know protein and wild caught fish and you know vegetable shakes with coconut oil and seeds and nuts you know the backbone of fats can be broken right. down into glycerol and that can get converted in, into glycogen for you to actually be able to replenish those stores so it doesn't have to be like you know rice krispies and sweet potatoes and oatmeal but at the same time that's huge i think a lot of people you know they'll hear me say oh well pre and post workout nutrition is overrated but there's an exception to that rule. And so when, when you're doing a two-a-day, like you're describing, yeah. that's where that post-workout or pre-workout nutrition Where were you when handy. I was boxing? I needed you in me corner, didn't I? Yeah, yeah well, just... you, you, don't, you don't want to rely on me for, for the hitting <laughs> advice. But yeah, I mean, that, that's you know that's what I have my degree in is, is nutrition. That's, that's one of the things that I see people, especially when it comes to maintaining weight or losing right. weight, like so many people just like, they, they take this trickle-down advice from, from, you know, bodybuilders trying to put on pounds and pounds of muscle or, you know, like college athletes and football players right. trying to maintain 350 pounds and well, you know, it doesn't work. One thing about boxing, like you said, you've got your degree in nutrition, right? Mm -hmm. One thing about boxing is boxing, 99% of boxing boxers are uneducated, right? So yeah. we, we don't know what foods to eat and most boxing trainers were boxers. So they're uneducated as well. I remember when I was 15, 16 years old, this, this will blow your mind. And I'm, and I'm fighting in the in the national championship final or, or even in the tournament after my win the day of a fight the trainers would say well, you can eat anywhere you want so let's go to McDonald's we'd be having McDonald's the day of a fight but, you know because yeah. where I'm from the north of England like uh, you mean the McDonald's kale and apple salad that one <laughs> yeah, yeah right no we were, we were getting double cheeseburgers and stuff yeah. in our face with fries and milkshakes this is like three hours before a fight yeah know? That, that, Me too, I, dude. That's how I roll. I played college tennis. I didn't know jack squat about nutrition. So I'd right. stop in for like Big Mac, super size fries. You know, <laughs> you'd get like halfway through your match and you'd be sluggish running on vegetable oils and beef. But yeah, yeah you don't know any better. And it was crazy because for me, like the coaches didn't know any better either. Right. Yeah, that, that's what I mean. Because yeah. I mean, they're uneducated as well. Yeah. So it was a uh, it it hard, but everyone was in the same boat, I think, yeah. in boxing. Well, now, now, you know, if you look at professional sports, like basketball is a perfect example, right? If you look at, at the, the national champions this year, the Golden State Warriors, they decided to go way above and beyond just like eating healthy and working out in a relatively advanced way, which a lot of, of NBA teams are doing. And they're using freaking like float tanks and right. they're using, you know, like Steph Curry is using strobe goggles and a trans direct cranial stimulation on his head. They're using neurofeedback. They're doing all these things, you know, kind of, kind of like you and I are saying, well, you know, a decade ago, we wish our, we wish we had a team nutritionist yeah. telling us how to eat properly. I think, you know, a decade from now, professional basketball players are going to be saying, hey, I, we didn't know about these like 20 different legal devices we could be using to enhance our reaction right. time and our speed and get to the point where folks like the Golden State Warriors are just yeah. like light years ahead of the other teams. Yeah, t times are definitely changing with, with that sort of stuff. And even even with re recovery now, well, I always did used to get an ice bath as well, like in, mm -hmm. in training camps. I think that was yeah. massive for us. Yeah, uh, I'll give you an ice bath tonight. Yeah, I love that. Yeah. It was great. Yeah, we did we did the Greenfield cold plunge out in the cold pool <laughs> back in the forest. I love that. And I was just saying to Glenn about like this sort of stuff that we did here would be great for boxing, for training, because what like up and what, what we're doing up and under them. Up and down the hills. Yeah. yeah. And, and yeah. under the pools when we're climbing under the Yep. That's why I like obstacle course training because what what I tell people is there's there's three things that you gotta be able to do. You gotta be able to run efficiently. 
You got to have grip strength like a gorilla and you need to be able to lift something or move something or crawl under something and then get up and keep running without stopping to catch your right. breath, right? Without walking it off. Being in this lovely house here and doing this sort of training, I don't know if you're not normal or if everyone else is not normal and you are normal because this this sort of lifestyle what you are living seems like this is what everyone should be doing but everyone's yeah. not doing this well it's 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 kind of an odd situation i mean not everybody can have like 10 acres out in the forest like we're on right now but i mean everybody can go out barefoot in their backyard everybody could take a cold shower right you know everybody could could just toss a few things in their home like for example the you know the bedroom you're sleeping in and, and the downstairs that you guys are in it's all it's all lit with red lights and there's not a lot of blue light wave spectrums the bulbs are special bulbs that allow your biology to function better in terms of circadian rhythm your entire room has you know, it's an organic mattress there's a HEPA air wow. filter that's churning out negative ions the water is you know not only is the house all powered with solar energy but the water is from a from a well and that goes through a structured water filter and then gets remineralized <laughs> there's all these little things that frankly people can do it's just like a lot of people don't right. know it, it's the knowledge component and a lot of the podcast listeners to this show you know they they know this stuff but right. Yeah, what, stuff what, what, people should know. Why Why do you need to have all that stuff? Like, like Your body feels great. I mean, my body you know just the feels good. Though? Oh, yeah, dude. When I travel and I'm staying in I mean, a lot of hotels now, you know, they're, they're adding like, you know, Marriott now has like their stay well room. And their stay well room, it's like filtered structured water and a chlorine filter on the shower head. And it's low volatile organic compound flooring and the carpets are mold free and the bedding is organic oh, wow. and you feel a lot better and, and the lighting right it's low led lighting and they've moved the wi-fi router out of the room you, you feel a lot better right. when you're in that environment but a lot of people don't know that their brain fog or their frequent immune system issues or their sniffles you know or any of the any of these things come from their environment the invisible so, variables the air the light the water the electricity so do you think like i said there my old boxing trainers were uneducated in nutrition do you think most people are uneducated in all of this stuff that you do here <sighs> People are getting better and better, right? Like there's this whole like, yeah, it's kind of silly because it's not really biohacking as much as just like healthy living, but there's right. like the biohacking movement and there's, you know, the, everything we eat tonight after we record, we'll have dinner and just about everything you eat, you know, I've either killed myself or I know where it came from in terms of the meat. All the food is grown in this garden back behind you. And, you know, people can do things like, you know, vertical gardening in their backyard in a patio in freaking New York City. Right. And they can, they can find CSAs or, you know, shares with farms where you can get your own meat and know where the meat came from. But, yeah, yeah I mean, a lot of people can do this stuff, but it's just about knowledge. You yeah. know, it's about... And, and what will happen is all the people not doing are just going to die early. The rest of us are going to live a long time and eventually How long take, do you think a, take, live for? take over the world and then it'll all, it'll all be How good. How long do you think you'll live for? I have no clue, dude. I'll probably get hit by a bus when I'm 60, <laughs> honestly. That's, that's what will happen. Oh, you're drowning in yeah. the swimming pool. Yeah, exactly. I'll drown in the swimming pool. That's right. That's what I was telling you earlier. My wife will find me when I'm 80, like floating out there after doing <laughs> underwater cold hypoxia, and it'll be a good way to go. Um, so uh, in terms of... Like what you were doing as a pro, like these eight rounds, a three on, one off, two a days. Yeah. Uh, I know you were lifting, you were doing road work, you were running, you were eating a, a crap ton of food. Box and burn, like these facilities that you have, did you design those to like mimic the physiological requirements of pro boxing? Like I go in there and you've got me warming up, you've got me doing agility ladder, um, doing doing like some shadow boxing, then getting up in the ring, sparring with you. Uh, we last time I was there, we finished with a game where you were like throwing a ball at me and you'd throw it at my head and you'd say catch and I wasn't supposed to head it. I was supposed to catch it and yeah. then you'd throw it at my arms and you'd say head and I wasn't supposed to to catch it. I was supposed to head. So you're like playing all these little like mind games and mental yeah. tricks with me as well. Um, how is it that you put together what you put together at Box and Burn? Like like what what were you trying to accomplish and what does a typical workout look like? Well, I wanted to take the the best part of boxing gyms I've been in boxing gyms all my life into this and my business partner Kevin Watson was a, a former strength and conditioning coach for Kentucky basketball team who was a stud as well he he put brought his uh, background in as well so now we we cross the boxing fitness training with cross training and uh, and it goes together really well like in a in a boxing typical boxing burn class we we do the mixture of like what I said, I, when I was training for the Olympics, I, I did them four sessions a day. We would be mixing two or three of them sessions in one session 
in in the box and burn workout and like the game we played with a with a head catch with you and the boys uh, that was just good it's a fun game and it's good for your mind and we just try to make try to make it fun and the, I mean the num- number one thing about coming into a boxing gym is getting the great workout but as well having fun and enjoying it and and learning you know how long does a typical session last one hour we do one hour sessions in in there and i mean we got named number one gym in california by men's fitness magazine in 2016 oh, really? yeah i mean oh, it's no. massive uh, the, the gyms have absolutely blew up you know we, we went from we went from having a boot camp on santa monica santa monica bluffs for donations only fast forward four and a half year now we've got two seven figure businesses two who's two seven figure gyms with a amazing education program as well uh, so we, we definitely what do you mean an education program so we, we've got the Boxing Burn Academy where we teach trainers personal trainers how to teach boxing it's that's that's blue I've that's just pretty been- sick you need to get a personal trainer from Spokane because I've been looking for a place where I can just box yeah. I had a I had a, a sparring coach for a while my kids do jiu-jitsu every Monday night like down the street from here and I would go in and this guy would kind of like you know box a little bit with me and do some kicking but he you know he's he's cool but I like what I do at Box and Barn. Like right. I would love to be able to go in and do the agility ladder and the speed work and the footwork and then yeah. spar. So you got to train somebody. Yeah, from Spokane. We, we've got over I think twelve hundred certified personal trainers that we've certified around America already. So I'm sure I'll be able to put it. Uh, yeah, put it out there. Hey, if anybody from Spokane is listening in and you coach boxing, yeah, like go go get go get certified with Tony's Box and Barn. Come back up here. You'll you'll have one. Uh, you'll have one customer at least with, yeah, with me let's, let's and my do boys. Um, so you've got you got your education program. People yeah. are coming and doing these workouts. How often? How many times a week do do you do a workout like this? Like we we do the box and burn classes, uh, which which in the gyms, which is. Uh, we, we, we have got like 50, 60 classes a week between both locations. But like if somebody's doing this as a workout, are they coming in every day? Or are they just like right. visiting once a week? We, tell, we recommend three times a week or plus. Because okay. a lot of people in LA, as you, as you probably know, they do other workouts as well. Because it's more cardio than resistance training, right? Yeah, it's a lot yeah. of cardio. Uh, but there is resistance training as well. So, Like, like, what, like what kind of resistance training do you guys do? Well, we, we, do, we do all sorts of different stuff. Like... Uh, it's a mixture of everything we've got we've got we've got like 30 trainers in the company now and they all bring their specialty whatever it may be like 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 glenn uh brings his, his speed and agility and all that glenn stuff. sitting back here behind us yeah yeah we've, we've we've got we've got somebody watching us doing a little doing a little video where's this video getting published by the way I know, I get video? it, on, on the Boxing Yeah, on the, YouTube. on the Boxing Burb YouTube website. We'll, yeah. we'll link to it. Go to bengreenfieldfitness.com slash boxing. We'll show you a photo of our outdoors podcasting <laughs> studio that we have set up here. But uh, you, what, yeah, so, 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 so Glenn we, helps to coach the resistance training well, as well? Yeah, Glenn's a stood up. That stuff, Glenn's, Glenn trains like all the high profile people that come to the gym, all the celebrities, all the actors, athletes if they come, Glenn trains all, all them lot. So we've got, a, we've got a great mixture of trainers that come to the facility and the results of people is getting fantastic. And then on the education side as well, like I said, we, we're teaching these personal trainers and or fitness enthusiasts how to box and how to teach boxing as a form of workout, you know, and the results that they're getting as well is, is amazing. They, they're telling us that they're helping, that, that's help, that boxing trainers help them earn more money. Like you said, you want a boxing trainer up here. And yeah. Like it's, it's a, fantastic workout and i mean any anything that to me feels like a mix of playing and working out like what we did on the outdoor exactly, course yeah. i freaking love it like i'm i'm kind of through with doing workouts where i've got a frown on my face all the time right like granted i mean you've seen me at the at, at your gym yeah like i'm not like i'm not yeah. like smiling like pinocchio the whole time <laughs> but at the same time like it goes by fast and i like it and there's there's the mental part too because you're moving all over the place but then you've got the one two three four five six you know one two yeah. hook three four so tell me about in addition to just the sparring if anybody out there in the boxing world is doing mental training like at a high like is connor doing things like dynavision boards or strobe goggles or you know when you were doing pro boxing did you guys use phone apps or like reaction speed tools things like that not really like we were old school we used the speed ball you know, mm-hmm. you know the speed ball the speed, speed bag speed yeah, bag, yeah. <laughs> we, we used that a lot but what I've we, got one in my office, but I have no clue how to use it. It's just like hanging there. I'll have to show you. Yeah. But what we done a lot of was visualization, you know, visualization mm-hmm. before you fight. I think a lot of athletes do that now, where where you be visualizing the the getting your hands wrapped, walking yep. into the ring, the, the the full of the full everything, getting in the fight, and then fighting, and then fight and winning the fight, and then when it comes to the actual fight, 
you've already been there and done that mentally. So I think that was one massive thing that helped me and helped a lot of boxers in the Great Britain team, as well as the psychology. We had a sports psychologist work with us on the, on the Great Britain team, which he used to study other countries and study how they acted when they got in the ring, because they had that as well. So little things like walking around the venue with your, chin, with your head held high, when your opponent's seeing you, like, the, you look confident, you know, things like that. Like power posing. That's yeah. interesting because they've actually shown that power posing can do things like increase your testosterone as well. Oh, really? Yeah. I never knew that. Yeah, like when you stand tall, you fold your yeah. arms or, or anything like that. And I've got a friend who I interviewed on this show, uh, Jordan Harbinger from The Art of Charm. And one thing that he teaches, especially like men to feel more confident when they walk into a room is they're like doing power posing right. like at the door before they even walk in. Yeah. Not only to get the hormonal boost, but just to be able to show That's when awesome. you walk into a room. Yeah, when you walk into a room, you want to look you're confident. confident. Yeah. yeah. And then as well, like things like before the bell went when you're in the in each corner go to the center of the ring now your opponent thinks that wow he's coming to the center of the ring he's up for this fight little things like that what our sports psychologists used to tell us to do really went a long way and helped the help us as a team and helped me as a as a boxer you know Hey, I want to interrupt today's show to tell you about something very unique. So there's this thing called quebracho. A quebracho. It's a macromolecule, meaning that it goes into your small bowel and it stops bloating from things like bacteria that you don't want in your small bowel. And then uh, what they've added to that is something called horse chestnut and a small amount of peppermint leaf. And for anybody who gets gas or bloating or constipation or leaky gut or anything that causes that inexplicable heavy sensation after an otherwise normal meal, you can completely get rid of this methane production by using this stuff called Atranto. I've actually popped it before. I've gotten on airplanes before too. Like, you know, you don't want to fart on airplanes. It's like the total anti-fart capsule. It's amazing. Uh, anyways, though, so you get a discount on this stuff called Atranto. And it's very simple. You go to lovemytummy.com slash Ben. Isn't that cute? Lovemytummy.com slash Ben will give you a 15% discount on this Atrantil stuff. A-T-R-A-N-T-I-L. It's amazing. Check it out. Lovemytummy.com slash Ben. Did you ever read the book uh, about this guy who didn't get into professional boxing, but he got he got into the ring to fight in MMA? And he was a professor. He wrote this book called Professor in the Cage. No. And he just decided Sounds like one a terrible day, idea. Yeah, he had like an MMA gym across the street from his office at the university. And I'll, I'll, I'll hunt down the book and put a link in the show notes for it. But the dude decided he wanted to fight. And he actually trained to fight and wound up like fighting in the ring. Just, wow. just as something to, to experience in life. And it's actually a pretty cool story. And it kind of leads up to the next question I wanted to ask you is like, if somebody's listening in and they're like, well, I want to try, I don't want to just like go do box and burn and try out all these different boxing workouts that Tony's talking about. I want to fight. Right. Like, what would you say to somebody like a man or woman who actually wants to get in the ring and fight? Like, well, like what, what would you do if, if you were just like total amateur, you'd never boxed before and you actually wanted to get out there and, and do an actual fight? Uh, well, uh, uh, there's a lot of people that want to, come in the gym and they say, I want to fight, I want to take it to the next level, they've been training for a while, then they do like the sort of training that we do, then you put a mouthpiece in them, and you put a head guard on them, and then you get punched in the face in a spawn session, and then the idea is, doesn't seem as good, you know? Yeah. When you, when you start getting punched in the face, uh, it, it sounds, it, boxing sounds, oh, fun, like you're looking good on the mitts, making loads of noise when you're punching. Sucks, dude. Sucks when you hit me in the stomach. <laughs> yeah, even yeah. when we're doing the shoulder and body. But now, yeah. now imagine if I'm hitting you in the face as well. Yeah. So I'm hitting you in the face and your hands. Does that headgear uh, actually work, by the way? It helps. A lot of people say it doesn't protect you at all and that, uh, that it makes people hit each other harder in the head. No, the, the good, the, there's so many benefits of having head guards on. Now, really? now, if you think, if I've got. If I'm hitting you in the head and you've got a head guard on, it's not just protecting your head, it's protecting my hands, right? Yeah, that makes sense. Uh, rather than hitting a hard skull. As well, if we both not he wearing head guards and our heads clash just like, like this, we're both going to get cuts. Yeah. So I'm, I'm all for head guards. There's been big studies saying that the, 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 make, uh, uh, the 
the worst. They do more damage than good. But I'm, I'm a big believer in head guards are really good for boxing. Now, and now they've took it out of the amateur sport as well. So in the Olympics now, when I boxed in the Olympics in 2008, we, didn't, we, we wore head guards. Now they don't wear head guards, which I think is a big mistake. And it's going to hurt boxing in the long term. Because when, when do you ever watch amateur boxing? It's Never. only in the Olympics. Never, yeah. Or if you, if you yeah. ever did, it'll be there. Whenever I watch men's gymnastics, right, every four years. <laughs> right. So, so now if a, if a parent thinks about putting their kid into boxing and they see it on the Olympics and they've got head guards on, and it's, it, looks, it looks safe, but now they're not wearing head guards and there's the, the cuts is all the time. People, boys are getting cut. Do you know what I mean? So now you're seeing uh, fighters, young boys getting cut in the eyes and the face. You're not going to put your son into a sport like that. But with head guards on, you might. So yeah. I think long term, taking the head guards out of boxing is going to damage the sport. So when, when somebody does want to fight, come back to what we were talking All about. Right, yeah. Let's say, so let's say they, they get beat up and they still want to do it. Yeah, I mean, they, they can do it. Not at our gym. We, we more of a fitness gym, they, but the sport. But when someone gets beat up... They, but is it is it like <laughs> MMA where you can hunt down places where... They'll actually, they'll have like amateur fights. So you can just oh, like yeah. step into the ring after you've been trained. Yeah, go box. There's there's loads of places where you can uh, where you can fight amateur. Uh, I wouldn't recommend it, but there's loads of places that where you, where you can go and fight amateur. Why wouldn't you recommend it? Because I don't believe in getting punched in the face. I think it's I think it's stupid, and I, and, I, and I'm even though I've got punched in the face for a living, and now I'm very successful through getting punched in the face. Well, you can see that, but. I just don't think it's it's healthy. I would never let my kids box. I so a box and burn, people aren't getting punched in the face. No, it's it's all it's all it's all for fitness. So so you're basically hitting somebody else wearing gloves, or you're hitting a heavy yeah, bag. Yeah, getting we call it get fight. You never just like put on headgear and get into the ring. No, we see fight get fighting fit without getting hit. We get do, fighting fit without getting hit. Yeah, you like that. Yeah. <laughs> But we, yeah. we, I do a spawn class on a Sunday. So you're still getting all the mental and the physiological benefits. You're just not fighting or getting yeah. hit. Yeah. We, we offer a spawn class on a Sunday uh, where, where people can come in and try it, but it's, it's all light and controlled. You know, it's, it's so easy to get concussed, especially when you don't know what you're doing. You know? Do you ever have any of your students or any of the box and burn attendees actually get into a fight? Uh, have you ever heard of that happening? Not really. And we, actually we, been able to use some of the skills they're learning there? N not not in boxing. I mean, I've been in a lot of fights. Yeah, back, back in, in the north of England, like, yeah. like street fight, street fights, and boxing's really helped me defend myself. But uh, not in the gym. Two trainers have nearly fight a couple of times, but, but that's about yeah. It. Did yeah. you grow up rough? Like like in terms of boxing, was this something that you had to do out of necessity growing up fighting I, in England, or yeah. was this something you took on as like kind of a preppy sport to get into? No, like, like I said, by all boxers, just just by all boxers are uneducated. Uh, like like me, I think I'm one of the only uneducated people you've had on this podcast because I noticed everyone who comes on here is the, uh, doctors or I thought you were a doctor, dude. That. That's the only no, reason mate, I had I'm you not, on. I'm, I might look like one. Nah, you're but, fired. <laughs> but uh, yeah, I mean, everyone, like most boxers are uneducated and, and they don't come, they come from rough backgrounds. That's why you see so many boxers, when they do make a little bit of money, they waste it all, all. I'm a little bit different. I'm a little bit smarter. When I made some money through boxing, I invested it. Like I own lots of properties in England now through through, through boxing, and then obviously with these gyms. Uh, so yeah, I mean, uh, but back to what we were talking about before, I wouldn't I wouldn't recommend anyone wanting to go there and start trying to fight, especially if you're if you're a grown man. But you were undefeated as a boxer. Yeah, I was undefeated as a professional boxer. Uh, but no. how, how do you how 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 are you not like the best if you're undefeated? Because I I got forced to retire, so I was defeated as an amateur boxer. I got beat in the semi-finals of the Olympics. Okay, or I would have been gold medalist as an amateur. Yeah, I, I would have been gold medalist. I got the bronze medal in the Beijing Olympics, and as a pro, I was undefeated in ten pro fights. But I got forced to retire through hand injuries. What happened to your hand? I had a hole. In one knuckle and a tear in this tech, this tendon. Oh, in this is that knuckle. that scar on that finger you're showing yeah, me right I now? I had surgery in Holy both cow, dude. hands. Um, so I got forced to retire. And at the time, I was devastated. I had no plan B. Like I never finished school. All I knew was boxing. Mm -hmm. I had a bit of a business mind. Uh, so I was devastated. But now looking back, it's the best thing that ever happened to me. Like I said, I've been punched in the face over 50,000 times. If I... if, if 
if I never re retired from boxing, that would have been probably a brewer. You'd be in a wheelchair. You wouldn't have two seven-figure businesses in LA yeah. and real estate mm -hmm. back in England. I would be sitting here right yeah. now with yeah. you. Yeah. Honestly, like that, like I write fiction now. I play music. I'm doing some singing, songwriting. Like when I wake up in the morning, I try and do a few things that take into account the fact that I could get hit by a bus. I could be out of fitness. I could be out of health, right? Like I could get thrown out of this industry at any point and not be able to rely upon my body, right? right or upon racing. And so I think it's a good idea to have stuff in your back pocket that you can rely on yeah. or be able to do like you've done and, and be able to run a business based right. on your passion rather than just looking on yourself as like, like, uh, you know, basically being like the face and the name of you, you know, right, you yeah. have an actual business. Yeah. So, that makes sense. I mean, yeah. and I guess the business is, is great. And now I'm enjoying life way more now than I was when I was when I was getting punched in the face. And you also have a podcast now. The bo is it the Box and Murder podcast? The Box and Life podcast. Yeah, Box, and, Box life. and Life podcast, which is going well. It's it's more of a hobby than anything else. Uh, and I love doing it, you know. And we talk about boxing and life. Nice. Who's the Who's the uh, the most entertaining guest you've had on that show? Brian Cullen. You know Brian, Brian Cullen. Cullen? You know, well, I, well, I don't know that name. He's on the Fighter and the Kid podcast. He's Fighter a and actor, the kid. comedian. Okay. It's a huge yeah. podcast. Yeah, yeah, I've heard of this he's dude before. He's always on the yeah. podcast. Yeah. Good friends with Aubrey Marcus. Okay. Uh, yeah, and he's he's a crazy. I've had Gary Vaynerchuk on there. Gary Vaynerchuk, yeah. Yeah. Yep. He's a stud then. That cat's pretty intense. Yeah, he is. A lot of boxers and, you know, yeah. I mean, it's, it's going good. It's something I love to do. Yeah, cool. Well, I'll link to that in the show notes as well for those of you who want to nice listen in to, uh, to Tony's Box and Life podcast. How are we going podcast. to have you on there? Yeah. As a yeah. matter of fact, uh, Tony's up here in Spokane, Washington, and I think, uh, I believe, after we record here, we'll probably take a pee break and we'll record another episode and you'll hear me on, on Tony's podcast. But in the meantime, I'm going to take some show notes for you guys. I'm going to hook you up with this concussion repair manual that Tony and I talked about and also that Telomere podcast that I did. We'll talk about Tony's box and burn gyms and, and put a link to those in the show notes, that Peak Brain Institute down, down in L.A., and also the uh, the professor in the case book that I mentioned and any of the resources I can hunt down for you guys. Um, in the meantime, Tony, anything else you want to touch on or share with folks? Uh, no, just uh, about, a little bit more about the Box and Burn Academy, like the yeah. education program. If you're a personal trainer, with our academy, you get CEUs for NASA. I'm sure, well, you were a personal trainer. You were, right? You yeah, got, still am. Yeah. I, ma I maintain my certification. Oh, I actually still, I, I train uh, eight people still online. Oh, you do? Yeah. So we do Skype and phone and I track their sleep. I track their nervous system, their heart rate variability. Right. I write out their training plans each week. So whether they're like, like there's a couple of, there's a pro poker player, uh, semi-pro soccer player, a couple of triathletes, and then everybody else is like a CEO or a, you know, a, a businessman nice. or a businesswoman. Uh, and then I also track their, their sleep. So I track sleep, HRV, training, and nutrition. So you're a, le and a legit personal yeah, trainer. Yeah, so I still, I still personal train. I'm just taking it all online. I don't do brick and mortar awesome. anymore. So yeah, yeah. With, with our education program, uh, you get CEUs for certification courses like NASAM, ES, ISSE, EFFA, yeah. uh, and a few more. So yeah, I mean, it, it's great and it really helps people increase the income with that. Yeah. So that's my little plug yeah. uh, on that. EFFA. A, we say A F F A. I get I, people don't understand me. G's either. G. Yeah. They think I say G. Yep. You know this yeah. accent, but this accent's done us a lot of good living in America. Was it? Is it called like a Cockney accent or is no, it? No, Cockney's south. I'm a Macam. For example, from Sunderland in the northeast. Okay. Yeah. Cool. Nice man. Well, thanks for coming on the show and for everybody listening in, bengreenfieldfitness.com slash boxing. And I'll link to Tony and everything that he does. And I definitely recommend if anybody gets down to LA, check out Tony's gym. And you have a directory on your website at, at Box and Burn of trainers people could hook up with in their local communities who've been certified by you. Yeah, that'll be on the Box and Burn Academy.com. Okay. Box and Burn Academy.com. Yeah. All right. I better find somebody from Spokane. Yeah. Thanks for coming on the show, dude. Thanks, mate. All right, folks. This is Ben Greenfield and Tony Jeffries signing out from bengreenfieldfitness.com. Have a healthy week. You've been listening to the Ben Greenfield Fitness Podcast. Go to bengreenfieldfitness.com for even more cutting-edge fitness and performance advice. 